How's everybody doing today? I hope you had a great weekend. Well, you know what day it is. It's Technical Tip Tuesday. You know, I was teaching last week, and one of the issues that we talked about that in which there seemed to be significant confusion was angle of incidence. And one of the issues when we're doing duplex ultrasound is we have kind of competing angles uh, that we need to be aware of. Let's talk about those a little bit. So, of course, as you know, when we do duplex imaging, we're really using two different modes. We have grayscale or B mode, and this allows us to visualize the structures of interest, to identify the anatomy, as well as any pathology. And we also use Doppler. Now, Doppler, of course, is a simultaneous processing of the returning sound waves that allow us to evaluate blood flow patterns. And this is particularly useful because it's performed in the context of the image. Additionally, this allows us to calculate the blood flow velocity, which forms the basis of our disease severity classification. So, of course, we direct the ultrasound into the tissues, and some of this ultrasound energy is reflected back to the transducer. Some passes through and strikes deeper structures. Well, the strength of that returning ultrasound wave is dependent upon the tissue interface and the angle of incination. Now, the strongest reflection occurs when the beam strikes an interface at 90 degrees. Now, the strength of this reflection is displayed as a shade of gray, and as different tissues reflect ultrasound differently, we can differentiate one tissue from another. So here's a pretty nice image of a popliteal vein, and we can see the valve in there. Pretty nice image. However, you notice when I use the heel toe maneuver and now strike that tissue at closer to 90 degrees, how my image improves. So remember, grayscale imaging, 90 degrees is optimal. Of course, we use the Doppler principle, which has to do with the change in the frequency of sound waves due to motion. For our application, we take the transmitted frequency and compare that to the received frequency. If that received frequency is different or shifted, we know the signal arose from a moving structure, in this case, blood. The magnitude of that shift is proportional to both the speed and the direction of the target. Notice my maximum shift is if the source is moving directly towards me, the smallest shift or lowest frequency is if it's moving directly away from me. And the magnitude of that shift is also dependent upon where within that arc I happen to be listening, the angle of incidence. So we can use the Doppler equation with a few simple calculations to actually calculate velocity. Now, I don't really want to go into the nuance of actually calculating that velocity, but of course it's useful because it helps us categorize disease severity. Let's just take a quick look at this formula. This is the velocity equals the constant, or the speed of ultrasound through soft tissue, 1540, times the Doppler shifted frequency, divided by two times the carrier frequency times the cosine of theta, which is the angle of incidence. And in fact, in our experience, the number one error in vascular ultrasound is a failure to appreciate this angle of incidence. So let's consider this color Doppler image of a common carotid artery. The first thing we need to do to interpret is consider the steering angle depicted by the box. So we know that our look angle or angle of incination is coming in along the arrow. We see the color is red. So we look over at our color bar at the left and that always displays flow direction. Flow towards the transducer is always on the top flow away on the bottom. So therefore, we know flow in that common carotid artery is moving from right to left. So let's consider this color Doppler image of the aorta. And this is kind of the classic example because of changing angles of incination. 
Let's check our color bar. So we see flow towards the transducer is red, flow away is blue. To the left side of the image, where our angle of incination is in this direction, and we see flow towards the transducer. However, to the right of the image, our angle of incination changes. It's coming in in this direction, and we see color blue or flow away from the transducer. So to interpret this, we can say flow is moving from left to right. If you notice kind of right in the transition, almost black because the cosine of 90 degrees is zero. So we get zero Doppler shift at 90 degrees angle of incination. Quick look at a carotid bifurcation. We see the distal common carotid and internal carotid artery flow away from the transducer is red. We see that short segment of the proximal external carotid artery. And in this case, the instrument sees flow moving towards the transducer, hence it's colored blue. You also need to consider angle of incidence in a transverse view. Here's a nice view of a popliteal vein in artery. You can see a very nice picture when I'm at 90 degrees. However, when I angle off, you see not so crisp. Now back to 90 degrees and then angle off again. So always be cognizant of that angle of incidence, even in a transverse view. Well, I hope you found that little tutorial interesting and useful to you. If you liked it, please let us know what you think. Like, subscribe, and if you need some CME, go to virtualveincenter.com.